Hey guys, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. Today is the start of a new series here on the channel where I'm going to revisit some running shoes from the Shoe Sanctuary archive. I'm going to call it Running Shoe Revisited. I think that's a pretty good name. Hope you enjoy. Have you ever played Pokemon? Or perhaps been lucky enough to visit the vintage guitar shops in Denmark Street of London. Occasionally you come across that rare find, a unicorn-like item that you may never get to see with your very own eyes. Today you might get that same feeling because I've pulled the Nike Vaporfly 4% Gakuso edition out of the archive. The Gakuso 4% Flyknit is that shoe, a rare find. I don't think they made an awful lot of them. Certainly over here in the UK, I've never seen another pair. A piece of footwear with exceptional looks and styling, but also some brilliant refinement in terms of performance over the original version of the shoe. So a few stats on this one. This one was originally released through the Nike sneakers app. First of all, I missed out on it there, but managed to pick up a pair from one of only a handful of retailers that had it here in the UK. The midsole gods granted me good fortune to be able to get a pair of these. We have a 10 mil drop from heel to toe, 31 millimeters of foam in the heel and 21 in the forefoot. I believe it was released on the 28th of February, 2019. Seems an awfully long time past that now, doesn't it? Seems like ages ago, the price was high on this shoe. I will not lie, but I love the looks and colorway so much I couldn't resist. We're looking at the upper first. I always loved the feel of the Flyknit shoes around this period. This one though feels a little bit more stretchy than the initial version of the Flyknit Vaporfly. The crimson red one that I had was much more coarse in terms of the upper. Didn't feel anywhere near as soft, perhaps not as abrasive, it just felt really, really cushioned inside, very plush actually. It's almost like the different weave they've used here in the Flyknit is just slightly softer, it's a bit more forgiving. Lacing was always a bit of a bug bear for some people in the 4% Flyknit. This one wasn't really that much different in terms of the lacing. Lockdown was still okay on top of the foot, but I did find that I was wanting a little bit more padding just around here where I laced the shoes up. In one half marathon, I do recall getting a little bit of discomfort just across the top of the foot here. It's probably like after like 10 or 11 miles, something like that. Certainly a very breathable shoe in terms of the upper material. It's almost like the toe box as well was just slightly more breathable. They've made very small refinements. It might just be my opinion of the shoe. It might be completely the same, I don't know. But looking at the two shoes side by side, certainly this one is slightly different in terms of upper to the original. Certainly some of my best race times were achieved in the Gakuso 4% Flyknit. Other noticeable changes within this version of the shoe include the switching up of this heel counter. It's actually on the outside of the upper. Don't see that very often at all. You can see there, just on the outside. Really weird. It does make quite a considerable difference though to the fit of the shoe. That little change just made the shoe a much better fit all round for me than the original version. Felt like it gave the Flyknit a more of a chance to grip around your foot. I had no rubbing or irritation whatsoever from that heel counter. If I hold the shoe side by side, you can actually see you've got this stretchy elastic section here around the ankle, which is simply not there on the original version. Almost like it feels a little bit lighter in hand. I found that the colors here in this version of the shoe help to hide grit and grime picked up from those daily runs. You'd never really tell I'd raced in this shoe and some quite muddy areas too. I think it makes for a really great looking urban style version of the 4%. Certainly the best looking shoe, in my opinion, of my whole collection. What do you think, viewers? They're exactly the same weight, by the way. I just weighed them, so it's clearly a placebo effect. Looking at the midsole next. So a PBAX based Zoom X midsole here in the 4% Flyknit Gakuso edition. Very light and only a tad heavier than the next percent in my size. I think the next percent was 224 grams in my size. So it's about eight grams difference there. But I mean, you've still got that superb bounce, incredible energy return from the midsole and the fatigue diminishing properties of Zumax. I know the 4% always produced a lot of comments from people about creasing straight out of the box in the midsole. But on examining some of the supplied information, it does shed a little bit more light on the shoe's creation. It appears that large sheets are made of that foam. They use an autoclave, so it basically creates a huge amount of pressure and heat. Those sheets are then put into some sort of 
pre-form that creates the actual parts of the midsole. Obviously we've got that carbon fiber plate sandwiched between the different bits. The Z-Max here in the 4% Flyknit does feel a little bit different to that used in the next percent. Maybe there's a slight change to the properties of the foam. It does seem more resilient though in the next percent. It could be that it's just the same stuff and they've just presented it and designed the pieces in a different way. It just makes it more durable. But to me, certainly in terms of feel, it does feel a little different. I think that stuff used in the next percent and the Alpha Fly does feel a little denser. It always felt very hollow in the 4% Fly and it doesn't feel quite as fragile in the next percent and the alpha fly. I've got to say the midsole and these still feel superb though after a run out in them today. Taking them out in some very wet conditions still yielded some superb results. Did some intervals today just to keep some speed within my weekly mileage. The 4% it still feels next level to some of the other competitors, it has to be said. When you consider this shoe was designed and put out way back in what? 2017 towards the end of that year nike really got things spot on way back then i mean to consumers probably 2018 was when people managed to get hold of one of these shoes or at least the original iteration i really like the 10 mil drop actually it does make a little difference i think it certainly makes for a very snappy speedy shoe i know kev burton seriously loves his fly knit on his zoom x shoe so perhaps this video today is for you kev gotta talk outsole now so when we talk about the outsoles of the 4% Flyknit, it always feels a little bit like the weak point. I've seen people absolutely mash up outsoles of these shoes within miles. Anybody that's got a more prolific heel strike is going to absolutely destroy them in no time. It's the rubber here really, they should have just had a full length rubber section here. The very outer edge of the shoes always gets ripped up. I mean I was really careful in these and there's probably about 70 miles into them now but you can see there, there's still some wear in the outsole. I mean, the rubber's holding up just fine, but I have seen even these sections just fall out after a while. Today on some muddy sections on the paths that I was running on, this rubber traction area here just doesn't cut it. You can see why they switched up to that channeled rubber section on the next percent. Just seems to give a little bit more ability for water and stuff to escape out as you slap your foot down on the floor. What I always find with the outsole of these shoes is once the paint and the outer layers started to crumble away, once water gets into that foam, it really does seem to make the foam a little bit more brittle and way less effective than it was before. It doesn't seem to dry out very well, so once it does get in there, it does seem to affect the properties. That side I got up towards 160 odd miles in the crimson red version of the Vaporfly 4% that I had. These are still looking okay though. I'll still carry on using them. They still feel fantastic when going at high pace. Just got to avoid any slippery surfaces. And cornering, well, let's not talk about cornering. Certainly though, I think if you can find a pair of these dead stock somewhere that haven't been used, I think they'll still produce amazing results. Perhaps if you can't pick up a Next% percent or an Alpha Fly, could be the way to go. Not this version. I think it was mainly sneakerheads pick these up and I don't see there's too many people, certainly over here in the UK or perhaps the US, that have been running in them. I know over in Japan, these were really big and I know a lot of people really, really enjoyed these and probably got out running in them. We'll talk value now. Price-wise, the Gakuso version of the 4% Flyknit was a lot more expensive in terms of Earth credits, possibly due to the designer chops, but it still remains as one of my favorite running shoes. Do though believe that the next percent is probably better value. It's a lot more durable. Obviously this one was just let down by that outsole durability. Just crumbles away pretty quick. I still though prefer Flyknit to the vapor weave that's used on the next percent in possibly all bar wet conditions. I feel it just provides a little bit more support. It's a little bit more foot hugging than the vapor weave. The more traditional running shoe feel is more preferable to me than that plasticky feel of the vapor weave. But I cannot deny that Flyknit does hang on to water and moisture a hell of a lot more than it does on the vapor weave used in the next percent. I love the box and the presentation here as well. Really did feel like I had a premium item when I picked this one up. I think a really lovely looking and performing version of the Vaporfly 4%. Did you have this shoe? Have you still got it? Do you still run in it? What do you reckon of the superb colorway here? I think it's one of the best that there's ever been. It is just magical. Look at the inner side there. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A film recommendation today. 
One of my most favourite films of all time has got to be Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Kate Winslet and Jim Carrey are fantastic in this film. Wonderful special effects, many of them created just with interesting and innovative camera work and a superb story. One which really pulls at the heartstrings actually, where Joel, played by Jim Carrey, finds out that his ex-lover, Kate Winslet, has decided to go through a process where she's had all memories of him removed from her mind. He decides to do the same thing, but while it's happening, realizes that he wants to remember her. Really is a touching story. And I'm sure anybody that's ever been in a relationship can kind of understand some of the feelings that Joel goes through. We all should try and hang on to those good memories of relationships, even if they've finished and they're over. So a really superb film. Quite thought-provoking as well. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I hope you've enjoyed the first episode of this new series today, guys. Thanks for watching through to the very end. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And also, click the bell for notifications of when I launch those new videos. It helps the channel out a huge amount as well. If you give this video a thumbs up like, and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.